friends, welcome back to the channel. So one of the most common essays that I see is the why I want to be an engineer essay. And it usually starts with something like, I knew I wanted to be an engineer the moment I picked up my first set of, wait for it, Legos. Side note, by the way, it's Lego, singular not Legos. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about three things to maybe not do in your STEM slash engineering essay, three things you can maybe do instead, and I'm going to walk you through an awesome sample essay from a former student that I really love. By the way, that student got into a selective college, if that's something you're interested in. Elaine, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. And you're going to learn some stuff that you can do in your essay. First of all, the things not to do. I wouldn't say talk about Lego or Legos in your essay, because why most students do this when they're writing about STEM and engineering, or if you're going to do it, mention it in like one sentence and then move on. Number two, maybe don't rehash your activities list because why your activities list is already in your application. So if you just say it again, they're kind of like, yeah, we know. Number three, I would say maybe avoid talking about that awesome experience you had at that robotics competition. Why? Again, tons of students do this. And number two, I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to show all of the range of who you are, your skills, qualities, values, and interests. What should you do instead? First, I would say brainstorm a range of identities that are important to you. You are so much more than just a STEM kid. What other communities are you a part of? What else do you love to do? Number two, if you are gonna talk about an activity, mention so what or why right afterwards. That'll help it seem less like a brag. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Number three, see if you can find a device, which is to say a thematic thread that connects all the different sides of you. Let me show you what I mean in this sample essay. While my friends binge The Office, the student writes, I'm at home with my favorite family tavern Cheers. Reminiscing on my first visit five years ago, going into my 10th visit, I realized the gang of Cheers is my mirror. They reflect how I've grown. This is what I mean by a framing device. So essentially, rather than just be like, hey, here's some different sides of me, the student has chosen Cheers as a particular lens for looking at his life. This is pretty cool because it raises at least two questions for us. Number one, what are the different sides of this student that we're gonna learn about through his connection to the characters in Cheers? And number two, why has this student been watching so much Cheers? Next paragraph. Sam Malone, handsome, charming, ex-pro athlete. When I first met Sam, I had the typical impression, a playboy. However, I now see the real Sam, a compassionate being. Raised in Birmingham, I've learned many positive lessons, but there are some lessons I'm ashamed of. Homophobia is still prevalent in Alabama. Something as platonic as hugging your friends fuels ridicule. There's an episode where Sam is conflicted after discovering his old best friend was gay. By the end, he determines that whom his friend loves shouldn't affect their friendship a progressive act for 1983. This became personal when my brother came out. I was angered that a society that taught me Southern hospitality tried to teach me to hate one of the people I love most. Sam's actions taught me who one chooses to love doesn't change their humanity and encouraged me to promote that view in Alabama. When classmates make homophobic comments, I always bring up my brother and our story. These same classmates are now attending the annual pride parades, standing up for our friends' rights. Two awesome things that this student is doing. Number one, he's revealing specific values and connecting them to specific examples. So for example, we get the value of compassion and he shows how he has learned to be more compassionate. And number two, there's a value of something like social justice or helping others. And we see the specific example of talking about getting his friends to go to the annual pride parades that gives a specific example of that. The second thing, and you don't always see this in STEM or engineering essays, is there's a little bit of vulnerability. And the way to be vulnerable is just to use specific personal examples. Next paragraph. Diane Chambers, educated, elitist, starving artist. Diane loved the arts and displayed her work proudly, even if her cartoons of people depicted animals. As a kid, my dad attempted to teach me how to draw. Side note, there's a dangling modifier there, but eh, I forgive him. These sessions ended in frustration as I wasn't able to recreate his work. While I was fascinated by the expression of creativity, I thought, I'm not talented. Through Diane's character arcs, I learned art is not linear. It's multidimensional. Diane would appreciate the discovery of my means of expression, graphic design and programming. I blend the two mediums to create an impactful product. Whether it's designing and developing an app to battle the Tanzanian water crisis, or creating advertisements and social media posts for my internship at a construction tech startup, I reveal my vision through my greatest passion, technology. Again, the student's using specific examples to support his values, in this case, his art, his creativity, and he's showing vulnerability. So he talks about a moment where he was like, I'm not talented, and basically like weaves in or suggests a struggle that he went through. Now, some of you might be like, you have to write about your struggles. You don't. You can weave them in in subtle ways, just like this. Next paragraph. Dr. Fraser Crane, intelligent, empathetic scientist. 
Frazier, we're on a first name basis, joined the gang later after falling in love with Diane at a mental health retreat. By the way, these little asides are really useful in terms of the tone because they break up the narrative. And also this video. I first met Frazier when I struggled to fit in with my peers. While I had a passion for STEM and its ability to uncover mysteries of the unknown, my peers had a passion for hating everything academic. While I thought Frazier was super cool, I still called him a nerd. However, watching the way Frazier embraced science gradually allowed me to realize my love, for it is something to hone rather than suppress. Notice that each one of these paragraphs has some kind of realization. That's cool, that's called an insight. Eventually, I developed enough confidence to reach out to a professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham to conduct computational physics research. Over the past three years, I've completed two research projects, currently researching the distinct applications of computer vision, and have become a pioneer within STEM. Inspired by the love for computer science competitions, I founded the district's first CS team. Upon concluding our presentation at the US Capitol, I knew Frazier would be proud. Okay, if you notice, he does kind of drift into a little bit of like naming his activities, but he kind of pulls it back a little bit when he says at the end there, I knew Frazier would be proud. So I kind of give him a pass here. But again, if you're gonna weave in activities, it's gonna seem like a brag unless you connect it to like a so what moment or a why. So we know why you're telling us this. Or you can do what he does, which is connect it back to the theme or meme thread of the essay, which in this case is Cheers, connected to the character of Frazier. All right, final paragraph. The Cheers gang. I've wondered why I clicked with them so well, since we are different people. Sam the jock, Frazier the nerd, Diane the artist, I the awkward teenager. Notice a little more vulnerability there. I've realized each of them is part of me. When I face societal pressure, I always learn and overcome. Side note, you might delete the word always because it shows extreme language. While I'm passionate about science, I also love the arts. Whereas I used to be an antisocial seventh grader, I'm now a senior with great friends and mentors. No matter what I'm struggling with in life, I know I can return to Cheers, where everybody knows your name. Which, by the way, was the theme song of Cheers. So again, what is this student doing? He's showing different identities through these characters and revealing different sides of himself. So he's saying to the reader, who's probably reading lots of essays about students who have, you know, come up, you know, been coding since they were two years old, and saying, ah, I'm more than just this. The other things he's doing well, revealing values, things he cares about, showing insight, answering so what, showing a little vulnerability through personal stories, and showing craft. Craft is basically giving the reader a sense that you spent some time working on these essays, that you care about the reader understanding who you are. And you can do that in lots of different subtle ways. Hope this was helpful. Below you'll find a link to my free guide to the personal statement, which is pretty rad. There's lots more at collegeessayguy.com. If you're a parent or a counselor watching this, I've got tons of new resources for you. We're creating them basically every month. Hit that smash like, subscribe button, you know what to do, and I'll see you soon.